Like Lou said, hi, I'm Kelsey. I'm a cartographer at Stamen Design. Um, and my co-author on this presentation is Eric Brelsford. He's our lead design technologist, but he couldn't be here today. Um, so this is not just my work, it's, it's both of ours. And I'm gonna talk to you about a project that we did with a client of ours called Densho. I should say this talk is maybe not the most PCD talk, but there are practical tips in here. So we'll, we'll navigate it and get there. Um, so what is Densho, you're probably wondering. Uh, Densho is a nonprofit organization that uh, is focused on preserving stories of Japanese Americans who were incarcerated in concentration camps during World War II um, and following World War II and preserving their stories for future generations. So the term Densho is actually Japanese and it means to pass on to the next generation or preserve a legacy. Um, and they maintain a lot of really great digital resources. So they have a, a repository, a really expansive encyclopedia, great genealogy tools, educational materials. Closer, oh God, it sounds so loud to me. Okay, is that better? Okay. Um, and then a tool called Sites of Shame, which is what I'm gonna talk about first. Can you hear me okay now? All right, so I'll start. There are two tools I want to talk about, but the first is Sites of Shame. Um, so Sites of Shame is a, a data visualization of the forced removal of Japanese Americans during this time period, so roughly 1942 to 1946. Uh, and it's, it's mostly geographic, so it focuses on, on where camps were located and where people came from and how they were moved around during this time. Um, and so you'll see, we'll look at the map in more depth in a second, but the data that's included are, is like where the camps are located, the size of each camp, the type, there are lots of different types, um, and locations of inmates before they were detained during their incarceration and after they were released, and then where specific families that are profiled were, um, were how they traveled throughout this journey. So this is the map that Densho came to Stamen with. So that's what we started with. Uh, this project was back in 2021, so it's been a while, but this is the first thing that we worked on with Densho. And um, as you can see, it includes, in this view, just the lower 48, and like you can see a little bit of Ho um, Alaska. And it only shows the facilities, nothing about individuals, but you can click on different facilities and read about them. But that's kind of it, pretty basic web map, nothing really special to write home about here. But there's so much data that Densho had that we wanted to help them like really tell this story. So the data that we had that we wanted to add to the new version of the map included expansive archival materials, so a lot of government documents and photography. Um, lots of people were on the ground documenting as things were happening. And then first-person accounts, that's one of Densho's, like, the, the pride, I guess, that of the work that they do. They have so many interviews with people. Um, if you go to their website, you can watch a lot of them and read them. Um, they're really interesting. Um, and then they generated a lot of spatial data using GIS that we're able to use to augment anything, you know, written or the photography that already existed. Um, from hand-drawn maps or just descriptions of different places that are that we know like more or less where they are located already. And then during this period, there was a census conducted, I think in 1945. So there's pretty good statistical data. Um, so we have like lots of demographic information about people. Um, the detail is is really surprising, I think, for this time period. This is the updated version of Sites of Shame, and if you want to check it out, I'll post the slides after, but the, I believe the website is maps.densho.org slash sites of shame, um, and it's free to the public, so anyone can check it out. You don't need to make an account or anything like that. But you'll see here you, each of the camps, if you can, you can probably read it. It's big enough on this screen. Um, they're styled by different the type is the different color, um, and then the size is the population, so camps were all different sizes. 
Uh, you can see, maybe not so well on this screen, but there's a, an exclusion zone on the West Coast where people were taken from. So that's where a lot of the temporary facilities were located. And then they were sent and like distributed to other camps in other parts of the country. Uh, the really interesting thing we think that we've added to this, the existing visualization is the family journeys. And so you can see there are, I think, four different families in this dropdown where you select one and it shows you every member of the family and how they moved during their journey. So where they were taken from, where they were throughout you know, the period of incarceration and where they were sent afterwards. Um, you know, you can see here like these lines are not similar to each other, so there's a lot of family separation, which we think is a really strong visual and tells a story on its own. Okay. Um, and you can also see how frequently people are moved around here, that it's not just like you're sent to one place and stay there. Uh, you can also see here that people were taken from one place and then returned somewhere else, so you're often like not sent back to your home. This camp that we're looking at is Manzanar, which I'll talk about more in a minute. This is in California. Most of the people there came from the Los Angeles area, and you can see how different the, the blue lines are compared to the yellow lines. There's not a ton of overlap. Um, in the interest of time, I might skip forward a little bit. Like I said, maps.densho.org slash, slash sites of shame. You can check it out and I'll post these slides afterwards. Um, but Manzanar, I want to talk about because that is the other project that we worked on with Densho. Um, if you've heard of Manzanar, it's probably because there's a book about Manzanar that's required reading in California. So if you're from California, you might be familiar with this camp. Um, it's located kind of between Death Valley and Mount Whitney. It was one of the bigger camps. The population at its peak, peak was like 10,000 people. Um, and most people, like I said, were from Los Angeles. So what we did for this project was we took all of those data sources that I mentioned before, but we had even more detail for Manzanar, like locations within the camp specifically, and we're able to map what we're calling like a close-up of the camp. And I think there are plans to do this for more camps after we you know, finish up this project. This project is not finished yet. It should be done the end of this year. Um, but in particular, like having the level of detail we do, we can see like the day-to-day -day life in the camp and see things about individuals that is not quite possible with sites of shame because it's such a broad overview. Um, here you can see, and I'll, I'm going to run through this pretty quick, so sorry if I skip things, but um, we just kind of threw everything on the map to get started. And every point on here is a person. And so this shows all of the people that were ever in the camp, the layout of the camp, so all of the barracks. Within each barracks, we know like roughly for most of them which apartment people were in. We have demographic information about them that you can see here. So in this example, they're styled by gender as reported in surveys and censuses. Um, we have information about how they moved. So you can see like when they were sent to a different camp or when they left the camp for another reason um, and how the population changed over time. You can see also in this example we have like the, the street grid that existed in the camp during that time. It doesn't look like this now, obviously. It's a national historic site, so there's some preservation, but it's, I mean, it was the 40s, so it's not quite, doesn't really look like this anymore. Um, cartographically speaking, we wanted to make this map look more archival, so like the bright green that you would get with like a typical map box base map was not really appropriate. So we went with something a little more aged looking. It's also kind of in a, not a desert, but like a, um, like a steppe or taiga region. So we like wanted the, the land to look a little dry, which it is. Um, and then you can see here, we have like the color palette is meant to kind of mirror what's in Sites of Shames because they, they're kind of a sister website. You can get to one from the other and then you can style people by uh, demographics, so you can see the breakdown at any view. It's always this individual, like circle 
one per person, never any kind of like uh, aggregation or anything like that. Uh, you can search for people, you can read detailed information about individual people. Um, and then there's lots of really great detail here that I could go into, but I'll share my slides so you can see it. Um, and I just wanna say that this project isn't released yet and it will be the end of this year, so keep an eye on Stamen's blog. I'm sure we'll talk about it then. But just uh, thank you for listening and thank you to everyone who worked on this project. Um, this is the type of work we do a lot at Stamen, so data visualization with maps. And if you have a project that has really rich, interesting data, but you don't know what to do with it, this is the type of thing we do a lot. So it's fun for me to talk about, um, and I hope it was interesting to, to hear. Thanks.